here tonight to proclaim the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here to reach you sinners out here with the precious truths of the gospel. How that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. How that he was buried. And how that on the third day he rose again from the dead according to the scriptures. That Jesus Christ, he died for our sins on the cross. He was buried. But on the third day, he rose again for our justification. And that Jesus Christ, because of his resurrection, each one of us, or each one of you out there who has not been saved, has the ability, has the opportunity to receive the free gift of eternal life. Yes, my friend, that is good news. As a matter of fact, that is the best news in the world. To know that your sins have been paid in full. Your sin debt has been paid in full by the one time, once and for all offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of the blood atonement that Jesus Christ made on Calvary's cross for your sins and for my sins. That Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, he bore, that he bore God's wrath in your place. That you should have been on that cross. I should have been on that cross suffering and agony and pain. Because we were the guilty ones, friend. You see, you and I were the guilty ones. We were the lawless ones. We were the lawbreakers. We were the transgressors. We should have been hung on that cross. We should have been crucified naked on that cross. But Jesus Christ, he willingly took your place at that cross, friend. Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life for you and I, friend. He willingly took my place at the cross of Calvary. He willingly gave up his life. He willingly gave up his life, friend. And by his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed, the Bible says. With his stripes, we are healed. You can be healed, friend. The Word of God says, the blessed King James, the Bible says, for he was bruised for our iniquities. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. Do you have a question? Can I help you with something? I repented to the Lord about uh, three months ago. Maybe so I'm with you. I'm with you. Let me ask you a question. What are you, uh, are you uh, saying that um, there was a time when someone shared with you the gospel? Yes. Okay. Exactly like you are to be right now. Okay. On the street. Well, what's your name? Brandon Minos. What's up? Brandon Minos. Brandon, okay. Nice to meet you, Brandon. My name is Justin. Now, let me ask you a question, Brandon. Um, have you... So you, you understand the gospel, what the gospel's about. So I grew up in a Baptist home. Okay. With normal Christian guidelines. And, and, and it was on Thanksgiving Day that someone had told me that um, repent for your sins on uh, chewing tobacco. Mm -hmm. God hates that. Um, repent for your sins is drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. This, that, and all the other, right? I see. And I, I never knew that. I never knew that. And now since, since November, mm -hmm. since Thanksgiving, I've been thinking, you know, I mean, the judgment of Jesus Christ Yeah. on, on myself. I see, Brandon. Now, can I explain something to you, Brandon? Yeah. Well, whoever told you that, I'm sure they were well-meaning, but they were wrong. Because let me explain it. Let me explain, let me explain like it to you this way, I, I come from a Baptist family. Yeah, you come from a Baptist family. family. I understand. So, so I understand from a normal Christian community, you right. have to understand that the, the, the God is our Lord and Savior and to go to heaven. Now, are you saved? Are you Have you ever trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I, I, I do believe that I am saved okay. in my own way. What do you no. mean in your own way? What do you no. mean exactly? No, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Okay. And I will go to heaven for that because I trust in Him. Okay, so you're trusting in Him alone to save you. Then. Yes. Okay. So yes. You, okay. But 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 what these people on Thanksgiving had told me was repent, repent, repent. Hmm. That that Jesus Himself. Well, who are these guys that told you to repent? These are like some street preachers. Street preachers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Over here? No, by yourself. Okay. Well, let me explain something, Brandon. If you are a Christian, you profess to be a Christian, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're a Christian, Brandon, I, I'm. I, all I can do is accept your profession of faith and your testimony. If you are a Christian, yet you can repent of your sins. But if you are lost, if you are a lost person, right, and you are going to ask me, hey, Justin, what do I need to do to be saved? 
I would not tell you to repent of your sins. Because you cannot, as a lost person, a lost person cannot repent of their sins, brother. Yeah. They have to have a new nature. The issue is a person is a person sins because he's a sinner by nature. And when Jesus, do you remember the book of, I'm sure you read the gospel account of John, right? Chap, John chapter number three? John, yeah. Yeah, when he was talking to Nicodemus? Yeah. Well, Nicodemus, when Jesus Christ was speaking to Nicodemus, now Nicodemus, mind you, he was a religious ruler. He was a ruler of the Jews, the Bible says. And he was, he lived a pretty up moral life. Yeah. He wasn't fornicating. Yeah. He wasn't living in sin or drunk, you know, doing drugs. But Nicodemus was not born again. He was not saved. And what did Jesus Christ say to him? He said, ye must be born again. And the reason why Jesus Christ said that to him, Brandon, is because the issue is not turning from your sins as a lost person. You cannot turn from your sins if you're lost. You have to have a new nature. Because everybody is everybody born into this world is born dead and out of. We're all born with a sinful nature. And that's why we sin. That's why we do bad things. So 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 not so much repent in the fear of God, but repent for the fear of God. Well, you are repenting. Now you do repent for salvation, but you're not repenting of your sins. You're repenting of your unbelief. Because in the gospel, in the gospel of John, the same gospel, chapter, uh, John chapter number, different chapter, but the same book. It's still the gospel of John, but it's yeah. over in chapter number uh, 16. When Jesus Christ spoke about the, the Holy Ghost, okay? Yeah. He said that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, when he would come, that he would reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on him, on Jesus Christ. So the defining sin is unbelief. So when a lost person hears the gospel, they are gonna they are to come under conviction. You have to be under conviction of your sins. You have to understand you're a sinner, you're lost in a dead in Adam, and that you're on your way to hell without Christ, but you're not gonna repent of your sins before salvation. What you're gonna repent of is your unbelief. Okay? And then once you repent of your unbelief, you change your mind about what you're trusting in, then you go from unbelief to believe in the gospel and you're trusting only in Jesus Christ to save you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so what those true preachers told you. I don't know who they were, but they may have meant well, but they were wrong. Now, if they knew you're, if they're saying that you as a Christian need to repent of your sins, then yes, they're right. But if they were telling you that they thought that you were lost, that's, that's how I took it. I got you. For, for, for my sins, I need to. Yeah, but you can't turn from your sins because yeah. you're. If you're lost, you need a new nature. Yeah. See, only a Christian can turn from their sins because they have a, they have two natures. But a lost person, they cannot turn from their sins. Yeah. They sin because they're a sinner. That's see, sinning is a consequence of being dead and out of that. Uh, Brandon, where we sin because why? We're sinners. We lie because we're liars. We fornicate. Why? Because we're sinners by nature. You yeah. know? So does that make sense? So yeah. the, the 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 issue of the gospel is that we need a new nature. We have to be born of God. We have to receive God's Holy Spirit. And we have to have a, a nature, a new nature that's born of God and that's born of the Word of God. That's why over in First Peter, I believe it's uh First Peter 1 20, 21 or 1 19. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but by incorruptible, by the word of God, right here, the King James Bible, by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So we have to be born again by the word of God, the King James Bible. We have to have a new nature that's as perfect as God is and as perfect as the word of God. And then once you become a Christian, once you're God's child by way of the new birth, now you're able to repent of your sins, your individual sins. Okay? So, but if, if you are, if you have trust in Jesus Christ alone to save you, Brandon, I believe you're saved. Even though you're kind of, you know, you're living out here, you're doing this kind of stuff out here. I don't agree with what you're doing right now, yeah. but I understand we don't go to heaven based on what we do or how we live. We based on, we go to heaven based on one decision, and that's whether or not we trust in Jesus Christ and yeah. want to save us. Does that make sense? That's what I believe in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. What I would. Just, but I'm also trying to live a more holy life. Amen. You should. So, if you are a Christian, Brandon, I, yeah. I would encourage you to do that. Yeah. And what you got to do, though, is you got to start learning how to, you got to go back. Are you in church right now? Are you still going to church? I, I go to church uh, occasionally. Okay. Not, not, every, not, not weekly. Not every, okay. Not every not Sunday? Weekly. No, not I got gotcha. you. Um, are you a member of a church? Or are you just, you're not a member at all? I go to uh, uh, First Land Lakes Baptist. Okay. Land of Lakes, okay. Land of Lakes. You, yeah. you actually live in Land of Lakes? I do, yeah. Okay, I got you. Because I, I, I go to a good church over in uh, Sethna. That's why I was asking. Sethna? Yeah, it's in Sethna, Florida. It's called Landmark Baptist Church. Very good church. Uh, Where's Sethna by? Because my um, my girlfriend lives over here in Brandon. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's close to Brandon. is close to Sethna. It's also. She, she's not a Jesus goer at all. Okay. So is she an atheist? Is atheist, she, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Oh, but man. But it's, it's what I deal with. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, Brandon, I, I, 
you, you, yeah, you definitely have a, a journey ahead of you when, when, in terms of sanctification. Yeah. I do commend you though that you want to you want to do right. You want to get back in right fellowship with God. You can. Me, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can. Sir. You do yeah. want. You can do that. But you have, it has to start with you. It has to start with your acknowledging where you went wrong in your walk with the Lord, and you got to realize what you've done wrong. You know, you're obviously back, if you're a Christian, you're backslidden. You yeah. ever heard of that term, backslidden? Yeah. That means you're saved, but you're not living like you're saved. Yeah, yeah. You're a Christian, but you're not living like you're a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. So God wants you to live like you're a Christian. I want you to live like you're a Christian. So what you got to start uh, try to find a good church. If if you're going to a good church already, like the, that one you talked about in Lane Lakes, yeah. I would encourage you to be more. Try to. Be get, more proactive. Yeah, get more proactive than that. Try to get plugged in more more faithfully to that local church. Try to be, uh, I would say, work on being more accountable to some believers, elderly, uh, more mature believers in that church, like the elders. And, yeah. um, try to be, try to set up a, like an accountability team, you know? People yeah. that can keep you accountable, you know? Yeah. Um, and just get into the Word. Get into the King James Bible. Start reading it more. And the, the biggest thing you'll have to grasp is learning how to yield to the Spirit. Learn how to walk in the Spirit. Because when you walk in the, the more you start walking in the spirit, Brandon, that's going to give you the victory over the sins in your life. Like you know, whether it's drunkenness, alcohol. I don't know what you battle with. I'm kind of, I'm kind of guessing it's alcohol. Alcohol, nicotine. Okay, so those but, are, but okay. I went to, I went to rehab last year in November. Okay. A, a year sober from drugs. Wow, a year, huh? Yeah, one year. Man, drugs. so now you just got to get sober from the alcohol and the yeah, nicotine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, again, Brandon, I mean, I commend you that you're trying to go in the, back in the right direction. Yeah. Um, all I could encourage you with is just, like I said, get back, plugged in more faithfully to your, back into your local church, and just get back into the Word of God, the King James Bible. Read it every day. At least try to read uh, read five pages a day, you know, or just read like at least 15 minutes of the Word of God. Start, start with something like that. And make sure it's consistent, and then just learn, learn how to grow. Listen to some sermons and weekly preaching by your pastor. Yeah. And then just that, and just I would say start listening to sermons on how to walk in the spirit, yes, learn sir, how to yeah. yield to the spirit. Yeah, I give you. A, I, I just I, just, I, I came over with you, baby, because because I was trying to you know what I mean. I'm I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I with, got you with, with God. You know what I yeah. mean. I'm trying to. I understand. I appreciate that. Was well, good. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Can I give you something? Yeah. Give me something to read here, and uh, one moment here. One moment. This is a track. And this has my church information on it. On the back of the track, it has Landmark Baptist yeah, I'll, Church. Yeah, I'll come out to it. I'll yeah, come out to please it do, man. I'd yeah. like to see you out, you, you know, and yeah. maybe even if, you're, if your girlfriend decides to come out, maybe she can get saved, you know? Who knows? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I wish for that, but you know what I mean. We, I know, it's her choice, we, though. We yeah. are two different people, yeah. Yeah. That's but a, you see, the Bible does talk about being, being equally yoked, though. You know that, right, Brandon? Yeah. So that's another area where you went wrong, but I, again, like I said, I just appreciate you coming over and showing me your support. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that. Thank you for your questions, too. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and resume back to preaching. But uh, if you want to stay around, stick around, you can. Or if you have Maybe to. Maybe I'll, I'll be around all night. Okay. You'll, you'll see me. All right. I'll be over here with you. All right, man. That's on point. Yeah. All right, no problem, man. Yeah. All right, will you be safe out there? And yes, uh, sir. Again, again, please check out my church, man. Yeah, I'll come out. I'll come out. I will. Hey, I will come out. All to right. Your church, yeah. Sounds good, I man. I will come out, baby. All right, man.